I had been to Hawaii before, and I had been in sort of a, a, a Rick Kane experience when I was about 15. I was a surfer, and I was very excited to go to Hawaii, and got there and realized how different the ocean is there, and how different, how much faster the water moves, how much more water there is, how there's things under the water that are sharp, and you know, it, it's just a much more dangerous place to surf. It's indescribable to, as a surfer, to be able to go to Hawaii and surf with your heroes, the guy who's been on your wall your whole life since you were 10 years old in pictures and you cut out of magazines. And the first day I go out to Waimea Bay, I'm surfing with Jerry Lopez, Ken Bradshaw, Mark Fu, and, and there's a whole host, and all the guys in the movie, there's, you know, Mark Acalupo and, you know, Derek Ho and everybody. These guys were just... the dream. It's a dream that you get to go surf with these guys, that you meet them and you're, you know... And it was just all of that and more. This is a guy who learned how to surf in a wave pool, and when he went to the North Shore of Hawaii, he didn't have any reference for how to be different or how to change who he was to try to fit into that environment. He just, I think he got, a, he got on a surfboard the same way he would in a wave park. I think Kiani is sort of, she's part of the dream, you know? She's part of the whole idyllic fantasy that you have if you're a surfer going to Hawaii for the first time. You know, you imagine there's going to be some beautiful Hawaiian, you know, girl there for you, you know, that it's part of the fantasy. Through meeting Turtle and meeting Chandler, he, I think he was sort of a captive audience at first where he was going to listen to whatever was being told to him. and. Through, uh, through seeing a person that he admired and that he almost immediately respected, he had to sort of listen to what they said in terms of the way that they viewed life. And Chandler obviously viewed life and surfing completely differently than Rick did. But I think he had to take notice because he looked at the life and the family that he had and he, he wanted that for himself. And this is how this guy got it. And this is how this guy thinks of surfing. Um, which had been a whole new way of looking at surfing for Rick. And I think that that's how he arrived at sort of finding that balance. Where, where Rick decides to sort of go against Chandler's wishes and transition from, I guess, be, just being his student to pretty much openly defying him and competing in this competition, knowing that Chandler doesn't, you know, he doesn't approve, is I think sort of his, Rick Kane's youth coming out, where it was almost like he couldn't stand it. He couldn't stand to say no. He was the professor, the photographer, kind of hyping him up about how good he is and how much he could compete. And I think that he's lured by that. He's lured by, you know, the attention that he sees those competitive pro surfers getting. I think it's a weakness. I think it's a weak moment in that character's life. However, you have to remember, he got there by winning a competition. So I think... I hope that North Shore is embraced by the surfing, you know, community as, as a movie that they like. But the fans of the movie, they just, I don't know, I, I, don't, I, I don't fully understand it, but they just love this movie and they're, they're, very, they're always very nice to me and they, they tell me how they're, you know, they've worn the tape out, they watch it night and day, they've seen it a hundred times, they... You know, now their, their kids love it. I mean, there's like a second generation of people loving this movie.